So, uh, how do we use a file sensor and then how do we use uh, a file, uh, a hook, a file system hook? So, to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is have this little DAG. It's a really simple one. It just has this one task defined by this Python operator, uh, which uh, basically will kind of just call this function say hi. Uh, what I'm going to do is create a sensing task and call the file sensor and we will kind of specify the file path so this can be either a directory or a file uh, for this video i will actually uh, look for a specific file so maybe i will look for the file uh, test.txt and the connection id needs to be the name of the connection that we previously defined uh, which I don't exactly recall to be perfectly honest I will look into it so it should be oh actually I have created two uh, so let me just check this this one is the old one and this one is the new one we created together so I'm gonna call this my file system tool just to be consistent I'm actually surprised it managed to create them both, but that's that's quite all right. So the FS connection ID, I will give my file system to. Don't forget to add a task ID, of course. We will call this sensing task. And after that, we want to also specify a poke interval. Uh, the poke interval is basically quite well defined uh, into uh, the base sensor operator which basically says it's the time in seconds that the job should wait in between its tries. Uh, so for this uh, particular one, we will kind of, uh, we will, oh, sorry. Oh, my screen got reversed, my bad. Uh, so. so for this particular one, we will basically uh, go for a, uh, uh, poke interval of 10. Okay, so once we are good with this, we can basically go back to our Airflow UI and look at the DAG. I'm going to refresh it and I'm going to trigger it. So uh, also another thing that we should look into real quick is how this two parameters are actually there are many parameters but there's also this timeout one which is basically the time in seconds before the task times out and fails and this is the default one so you want you might want to change it uh, uh, accordingly so going back to airflow i'm gonna refresh this one and as you can see it's quite interesting that Basically, uh, I forgot to kind of hook these two together. As you can see, this is quite an interesting turn of events. So basically, this one is still running and this one already run because I didn't set the dependency, the downstream dependency from one to another. So let's do that right now. So we're going to do sensing task, run this task. So in this way, we have the dependency sets I'm gonna basically mark this one as failed so and I'm gonna trigger it again so if we refresh this time this one should not run unless the previous one finished and as you can see if we go here and we kind of see the log it will say that it's poking for this file uh, this file that it's spoken for is uh, consists of the base path, which is the one we defined in the connection, and the actual file name that we specified in the DAG definition. And as you can see, every 10 seconds, 27, 37, 47, it's spoking for this file. So what we want to do right now is hook ourselves into the containers, create this file, and see how the DAG behaves. So to do that, let's get back to PyCharm. I'm gonna really quick exit the presentation mode. I'm gonna open the terminal, create this uh, uh, new terminal here. 
and I'm gonna do a docker ps to see my running containers and this is the container ID I kind of want to hook myself into so I'm gonna do a docker exec uh, interactively oops it didn't paste this one as I expected this container the command bash so as you can see I am hooked into the container right now if I do an ls uh, it will show the kind of um, files which are in this working directory I will go up one actually I will go into TMP which is the folder we are looking into and go back to airflow real quick just to show you that this one still poking for the file but so the task is still in the running state going back to the log and now I'm gonna kind of touch this file and let's do that right now okay if I refresh now this last poke was at 37 so let's wait a little bit and see what happens okay so as you can see the file was created and the success criteria was met so this is now exiting correctly and if I go to this uh, graph view you will see that both of the tasks correctly uh, kind of uh, executed so why is this useful and how can we use this uh, the sensor is useful when you know something uh, some file or some files are going to be dropped in a folder but you don't know exactly when so what you're going to do is kind of listen for uh, these files and you're going to poke this uh, file system once in a while and see if that file is there and once that file is there you want to run success other operations so maybe you want to get the file want to move it you want to run some operation on that file the nice thing about Hairflow is that it will kind of give you different uh, different connections that you can do so for now we have explored this file path but you have support for uh, for example for FTP, SFTP, uh, HTTP or even uh, Google Cloud Platform buckets, S3 buckets or Azure blob storage. You have uh, a lot of different kind of uh, ways to uh, connect to these uh, data sources and then you can trigger uh, your uh, tasks accordingly. Um, and that's it for this video. In the next one, I will kind of show you how to create a hook and use that hook to retrieve the file and do some operations on it. Thanks for watching once again.